Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times, and I'm here at uh, Intel Foundry uh, Connect Direct, and uh, we are talking to Kevin O'Buckley, who's uh, the VP and General Manager for Intel Foundry Services. Kevin, hello. Nitin, great to see you. Um, well, we've, we've spoken virtually, but it's the first time we're meeting, and uh, you gave uh, one of the executive uh, presentations this morning. Um, what's the crux of um, uh, your key announcements this morning, and, and what you're you're wanting to get over as a message to your customers. You bet. T today's announcements was w were really around two things. First, as you can imagine, for a technology conference, we did a lot of talking about what. We talked about new technology innovations that we're putting in place for improving power performance, You know, our next generation technologies, uh, migrating from our 18A node, which is in risk production now, to our next generation technology, 14A. A lot of time talking about the what's from both the silicon technology and also our advanced packaging technologies. And that, that was a technology roadmap we got. And that's I think exactly that, right. Yeah, and that's in, exactly in right. The different locations and all that. Yeah. Right on, right yeah. on. And, and the, the companion to the what in today's conference was, was about the why. So we spent a lot of time, Nitin, trying to talk about and conveying that as we sort of progress on this journey as a foundry company, we're now engaging much more deeply with customers and we're sort of able to move out of what has been a historical intel, frankly, of a foundry with a captive customer of one yeah. into a customer of many. And, yeah. and the big part of the conference was about talking about the why. You know, Customers are telling us this is a great technology, but we should add this feature or that feature. So connecting the what and the why. So we, we heard that a lot, and I think you made some announcements this morning. And I'll ask you some questions later on that. But um, the, the announcements around various alliances and, and uh, the email, so tell me, just summarize some of those. Yeah, you, yeah. you bet. So on the, uh, um, you know, from an alliance partner standpoint, I think you and I and, and probably most of your audience know that this the industry has moved way beyond, I'll do it myself, right? So a big part of our announcements today were around enabling ecosystem partners. So for things like our uh, EMIB technology, bringing in new design partners to support us, and also a number of customers are telling us they're looking for full turnkey services. So we announced a value chain alliance and a full chiplet alliance actually enabled on Intel Foundry and on Companion Foundry technologies. And how is that different to what's out there at the market with a, you know, you've got, for example, with iMEC doing the automotive chiplet alliance and you've got various other uh, chiplet initiatives. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got it. This this one, I, I would say, has it does have Intel Foundry at the center of it, but it's fundamentally about ensuring that we're enabling our technologies to interoperate. So the key for us is interoperability. Yeah. Uh, and and for customers to develop chiplets that use Intel Foundry can be integrated using packaging technologies, for example, also from Intel Foundry, but with mm. Foundry sources outside of Intel Foundry. And, yeah. and our customers expect that to be completely seamless. Okay. And the other announcement was with Mcore, wasn't it? Yeah. The, so. Yeah, kind of like that. Right you know, on. Working with somebody else rather than you doing it yourself. Right on. That's another perfect example that, that is sort of the, the 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 why, right? The key voice of the customer here is. It's how we love your advanced packaging technologies, but but it's important to us that we be able to manufacture it in, in other geographies, for example, outside an Intel current footprint. So our partnership with Amcor is actually our first time ever that we're expanding our advanced package manufacturing alliance, our assembly alliance outside of Intel, and Amcor's a wonderful partner for us on that. And, and, and so they'll be offering that service to your customers. That's exactly right, that's okay. exactly right. Okay, and um, the um, other thing is, um, how important are these relationships with UMC and MediaTek? Because we, we heard from them this morning, and, and I think you talked a lot about the the, the, the twelve nanometer process, and yeah, the, and you know all the other stuff you're doing with me, MediaTek. Yeah, I, I think MediaTek and UMC, first of all, are fantastic partners, but they're partners from a different perspective. MediaTek has been a wonderful, what I would call a teaching partner. MediaTek has enabled us to become a foundry supplier for them, but has invested their engineering efforts and, and their resources in teaching us what their expectations are and how to how to provide full service to a customer. And it's fantastic to have a customer like MediaTek who is teaching us. Mm. UMC is an oh, Just to, before you go there, um, I think what I got as a message from all of you speaking this morning was, you know, we're trying to listen to the customer, we're trying to be more customer centric. And, yeah. and I presume MediaTek is giving you a lot of those inputs. MediaTek is absolutely a critical okay. part of, of yeah. that process. They're not okay. exclusively, but, the, but uh, they have been, the way I would describe it is they've leaned in. They've yeah. leaned in because they recognize the importance of a diverse supply chain. Okay, and, and then uh, and what about um, the UMC? Yeah. UMC is, I would say, is also a partner, but they're more of a development partner for us. They mm. bring 
frankly, an already mature customer-centric mindset as a foundry and in a mature foundry. And they're bringing to us their skills in technology development and manufacturing in a partnership with us in our Arizona fab to develop a new 12 nanometer technology for both of us to support customers. What I've heard this morning is, you know, Intel provides uh, in this partnership technology and um, uh, UMC provides the oper uh, operational uh, aspects of, yeah, that, of, of that relationship. That's exactly right. And it is actually an Intel, it's an existing Intel facility in Arizona, so yeah. that there's an added benefit. The capacity. Not just, that's exactly right. Yeah. Not just providing what our customers want, but also you know, recognizing we're new as a foundry. And for all foundries, a key important part of becoming a viable foundry business is using existing assets. And that partnership for us is definitely a use. And I, I heard that a lot talking on the show floor. Yeah, it's just about uh, how do you utilize some of those assets and how do you make, make them more uh, customer centric. Talking of customer centric, yeah, what's yeah? We heard a lot from talk uh, from a talk point. What's real in all of this? Yeah, what have you got that's real? Yeah, I would say the most important from a customer centric standpoint, the most important part for us is visible externally in our roadmap changes. So we've made a number of changes to our 18A technology, for example, to add features mm. that customers beyond our first customers were asking us for. Right. Uh, and same with advanced packaging. So, so the, the most visible customer impact on what we're doing is actually in the roadmap changes that we've announced today. Okay. Um, and final question, um, what's it like working for LipBoo now? Uh, very different, uh, I guess. T minus one month. We're, we're, we're a month in with them. Uh, you know, I would say you heard me say customer 47 times in, uh, in our discussion today and, and in today's keynotes. I think I would say that's the number one transformative aspect of Blissboo. He's known across the industry as one of the most customer-centric CEOs on planet Earth, and he's absolutely bringing that and leading with that at Intel as his priority. Uh, and what can we expect from you in 12 months' time at Intel Foundry? What, 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 what's, what's your metrics for, for the next 12 months? For, for us, uh, you know, I think continued, continued perspective on how we're talking with customers and how we're listening to customers is, I think, the most important success metric for us as a Foundry team, so evolutions of our roadmap. Uh, I certainly also hope a year from now we're talking about our successful ramp of our next-gen 18AP technology and, and crowing from the roof about progress on our 14A and next-gen advanced packaging technologies. And maybe some big customers as well? Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. That certainly would be a great success criteria. But ultimately, as a foundry, it's my customer's decision. The, the when and the how things are announced is up Got to it. my customers. Yeah, obviously. I'm happy to yeah. accommodate that. I, I know that. <laughs> right on. Well, Kevin, thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure. Always. Thank you.